Okay, today I'm going to be working in Microsoft Excel 2010 and I want to talk about some of the list management tools that are available within Microsoft Excel. Our primary focus within the Fluent User Interface will be under the Data tab of the ribbon, so I'm going to go ahead and move over there now. In the Data tab, we're going to be talking about some tools from two specific groups, uh, the Data Tools group as well as the Sort and Filter group. So, as I look at my worksheet, what I have is a very simple list of employee information. Um, I've got text, I have some date information here, and one of the first things that I notice about this list is that the person who originally typed it has placed the first and last name in the same column. Perhaps in the future, while working with this data, I'd like to be able to sort it alphabetically by last name. So the way in which it's positioned now with that information in one column is going to become very difficult for me to be able to do that. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is work with a data tool called Text to Columns. It's located in the Data Tools group of the Data tab in the ribbon. And first off, I need to make a spot uh, within my list to be able to um, hold that last name information. So I'm going to right click here on column B and just do a simple insert column. For the sake of making this make a little bit more sense, I'm going to type in a column heading and just correct this one a little bit. There we go. So I look down through this column, column A, where we have the first and last name of each employee. I can see that it appears as though the first and last name are separated by a spacebar hit, which is very traditional although sometimes you will see a last name comma first name type of entry style. It's important that you know going into the text and columns feature what that that person who typed the list up has used and what they've used consistently. So in this case it's a spacebar hit. So I'm going to go into text to columns. When text is separated consistently either by a space or by a comma, uh, they refer to this as delimited. So we're going to choose delimited here in the first step of the wizard. I'm going to click next. Now oftentimes when you come in here, uh, Microsoft Excel will not have chosen the correct delimiter. Oftentimes you'll see it defaulting up to the choice of tab. So don't be alarmed if you have to come in here and you know switch this out to what you're actually separated by. And one of the nice things here is that if a person who did the data entry was not consistent, maybe for one name they hit the spacebar twice accidentally, you always have this option to check this box called treat consecutive delimiters as one. So I would suggest that you keep that checked because sometimes you just don't know. You're working with maybe tens of thousands of rows of data and you're not going to have time to go down through and you know figure out how many times someone hit the space bar. So it's just safe bet to, to keep this treat consecutive delimiters as one selected. I'm going to hit next. Uh, this is asking me if there's any particular way in which the text is formatted right now so that when it does separate it out into the additional column, um, you know, it, it properly, you know, puts it into the right format. This is an entry that's it's just gone in as general, so I'm just going to keep it as such, and I'm going to click Finish. You'll notice that what this does is that for the highlighted cells in column A, Microsoft Excel has found the space bar, a uh, hit between the first and last name and has pushed that last name information over into column B. So this is a nice way to normalize your data down to the smallest meaningful value, make it a bit more workable. Uh, oftentimes we see this similar scenario with addresses where people have put in the street address, the city, the state, and the zip all in the same cell. Don't forget about text to columns up here in your data tools. That will allow you to go through a process of telling it, well, this is delimited by space, this is delimited by a comma, and so forth, to get that information broken down into those multiple columns. Now that I do have a properly designed list, data is normalized, everything looks consistent from top to bottom, I'm just going to talk a little bit about simple single level sorting. So I'm going to switch over here to the left of the sort and filter group, and let's just say that I want to sort these individuals alphabetically by their last name. I can click into anybody's last name, doesn't matter. I can do an A to Z. You'll see the list flash. Now all of my rows of data have been reordered based on the person's last name. Do a quick Z to A. Now we have them descending based on the person's last name. So that's simple single level sorting. 
Now if we're looking to do a multiple level sort, maybe I want to sort by the department and then by region within the department. What I can do here is click on the sort button in the sort and filter group which allows me to do unlimited sorting levels. Now this unlimited sorting level came about in uh, Excel 2007. So if you have an earlier version of Microsoft Excel, your limit there is going to be three in regards to sorting levels. So I'm going to sort predominantly by the department. Be sorting A to Z. Microsoft Excel picks up on the fact that that's text. I'm going to add a level and then within department I'm going to sort by region did pick up on the fact that my properly designed list has header rows. Just a word of caution in here, don't add a level if you're not going to use it because Excel does not like that. So I'm going to select that and delete it. Alrighty. Click OK. You'll see that my list is predominantly sorted by department then alphabetically by region within department. So if I look at logistics, which is a bigger area here, I can see that I'm sort of sorted alphabetically by region within the department. Now we're going to see the same type of behavior with dates. If I want to see the person who was hired first in the company, I can do an A to Z sort, picking up on that. And that's again because the, the cells are formatted properly as a date. You can go Z to A, see the person who was most recently hired, and so forth. So those are your sort options. You don't have to highlight anything uh, if it's a properly designed list. Microsoft Excel is going to pick up on that structure and capture that structure based on the fact that there are no blank rows. Everything's consistent from top to bottom. If for whatever reason you did need to isolate a portion of a list and sort just that isolated group of rows, of course you would highlight or select that first. Okay, going to move on next into the filter area. Going to turn on this uh, feature called Auto Filter. Just going to go ahead and click that. What this causes to happen is Microsoft Excel will place um, downward pointing arrows, filter arrows, to the right of each column heading. And this makes it very easy for me to filter based on criteria. So if I go to department, for instance, maybe I just want to see all the people who work in logistics. Check that box on. Click OK. Those are my individuals who work in logistics. One of the new improvements that they made in Office 2007, and is still here in 2010, is the OR scenario is now a checkbox type of environment. So if I want to say, okay, I want to see the people who work in logistics or training, I can check both of those. And then it's going to give me the result sets if one or the other is true. Maybe I'm only interested in those individuals working in logistics or training who work in the South. Now I can add to this what is called an AND. I can say OK. Let me just see those folks who work in the South. Click OK. So I have four people, three who work in training, one who works in logistics, coming up in the Southern region. Now this is a very small list in comparison to what most of you will be working with. Um, so do be aware that you know you can work across and filter your way down by building AND and OR scenarios. And sometimes in doing that, you may have filter arrows on several columns. So one of the things to keep in mind is that you do have the ability to clear a filter using the clear option up in the sort and filter group. Pick that. All the auto filters on each one of the individual columns have been removed and the full list is displaying again. One of the nice new features that they brought about in Office 2007 is the ability to filter by color. So you can see here on my higher date column, I get a sort by color option. I'm using two different fill colors in this particular column, or filter by color. So maybe all the folks who are in the green are up for a yearly review. I can filter, get those individuals who meet that criteria. So this is nice if you keep a list of maybe inventory and uh, you are flagging particular rows of information based on a color-coded sequence. You now have the ability to filter by that color. I also wanted to mention that in each individual drop-down arrow, you do have the ability to clear the filter as well. There we go. Now, I only have one column of data in this particular list that would allow me to run um, some parameter criteria, so to speak. If I go to the higher date drop down, I see my date filter options. 
You know, can I find everybody who was hired before a date? Find everyone who was hired between two dates. Find everyone who was hired this year, last year. Now, some of these date prompts are a little bit different um, as far as the comparison operators that we've seen in earlier versions of Microsoft Excel. So, do be aware that you know this quarter, last quarter, next year, this year, those are some new features. But let me just do a really simple one. I want to find everybody who was hired before because this is going to bring up the custom auto filter box and you'll see this on any field that allows you to run comparison operators it's probably a good idea to mention that in addition to what we saw as popular date choices there are other things in here for text driven environments like begins with does not begin with ends with the one contains does not contain if you're looking for a particular word within a product description or any product description that does not contain a particular word. So don't forget about some of these goodies that are in here. Okay, I'm going to say um, higher date is before. And I'll just make something up here. I'll do uh, July 1st, 2006. Click OK. And there we have it. Those are my individuals who were hired prior to that date. Go ahead and clear that filter. Okay, so to go back and summarize, this particular tutorial primarily deals with some tools that are available for those of you who are list keeping within Microsoft Excel. We looked at the uh, text to columns in our data tools, moved on over to simple single level sorting, multiple level sorting, and of course filtering. I'm going to turn that filter off. I hope this was helpful, and uh, happy filtering and, and sorting.